Hi, hello, good morning, my dear students. Today we are continuing the next portion of chemical kinetics. In the last class, we have discussed about the zero order and first order rate of reaction and its half life. No doubt, they two are most important. And today's zero first order reaction, it is also the most important for two months. They will ask you define sort of first order reaction and give example. So it's important for your examination point. So look here, what is pseudo first order reaction? Here pseudo first order reaction is nothing but it's a order where the reaction which is having the higher order of the reaction can be converted into the lower order of reaction. It means some of the reactions are having, we know that order of the reaction is probably it will not exceed more than 3 or 4. So it means if some reactions are having more order of the reaction, means order of the reaction may be 5, 6, 7 like that. So such kind of higher order, higher order reaction can be reduced to small number of order of the reaction. That process, that reaction is called as pseudo first order reaction. Pseudo first order reaction is defined as the higher order reaction can be converted into the lower order reaction. So here for example, can you see here? In this example, CH3COOC2H1, it is ethyl acetoate which undergo reaction with the water in the presence of acid. Therefore, it is called as acid hydrolysis of acid hydrolysis of ethyl acetate. Ethyl so to the ether extent, we are adding the acid in the presence of acid. So we are adding the water in the presence of acid. Therefore, it is acid hydrolysis of ether acetate. See here, when this ether acetate is dissolved in the water in the presence of acid, it is going to give the acetic acid and ethanol. So in this process, what happens? How we are converting the higher order into the first order means by considering one of the reactant, the reactant may be two, three, or many more. But among those reactants, only one, we are considering all the concentration of the reactant, but one, either this one or this one, we are taking one in a large quantity. So, large quantity is nothing but, so here water we are taking very large quantity, so that the concentration of the water is do not changing. If concentration of water is nothing but, if the quantity is less, we have to consider it is variable. If the quantity is more, means concentration it is taken in a large quantity. It means its concentration never changes, it seems to be a uniform. Therefore, to make the higher order reaction to a low, lower order reaction, we are considering all the reactant except one in a large quantity. So here, between these two, we are considering the water, we are taking the water in a large quantity, large process. So the, that's why it is considered as a constant. Means if we take the water more, the concentration means order of the reaction is taken as constant. It is what? It is negligible. Why? Because if water is in a large quantity, the water do not undergo any changes. For example, if we take a uh, for example, even dot the pakiti then the glass or dot the tanker. Dr. Tank or one spoon of sugar haki than the taste on Sata, and so the like and right one glass of lagade, one glass of water, no soap sugar haki, a salt haki, it is considerable to taste like it and water. Large quantity of the water again, a winner of one spoon of salt or sugar haki, then change on Sala because it's do not going to alter its taste for a large quantity of water. Other meaning it would not be much here. We are considering the water. In a large quantity, if we add any other components to that one, we are not changing that. It seems to be a unique. You know, once all Pakitakshna change up the water quantity or water quality remains as it is. So it means here water we are considering a large quantity. So for that reason, based on this one, the rate of this reaction can be written as here rate K is a rate constant. We are taking initially it is as K dash. Why means again I am telling you. Here the concentration of reactant that is CH3COOC2H5. Another concentration is water. Reactant concentration of water. 
So what we are considering here, K dash is a rate constant and water we are taken as a large quantity. It means water do not change its order. For that reason, we are considering K dash and concentration of water together it is another constant that is K. We are considering this one how it is. Red concept is considered as K dash and together water, concentration of water is not changing because we are taking large quantity. Therefore, together K dash and concentration of water, together we are representing another concept that, that is small k. Initially, we have taken as K dash. Therefore, K concentration of CH3, COO, C2H5. Look here, the concentration, the power of this one is 1. Here we are not writing any power because it may be any power, but if we take a large quantity, its order are not considered because it is not changing, it is a unit. Therefore, by neglecting this water, we are writing only this one concentration of one reactor because we have taken this one is more. Why? Because if the concentration of H2O is in a large quantity, it is not rendering, it is negligible. Therefore, the rate of the reaction, it may be a higher order by considering the water, but we are neglecting. Why? Because we are taking the large quantity. So this kind of process is called as pseudo first order reaction. What is pseudo first order reaction? The higher order reaction can be converted into the lower order reaction by considering all the reactant except one in a large quantity. Such kind of process or such kind of reaction is called as pseudo first order reaction. For example, first one is this one, another one is Inversion of cane sugar is also an example for uh, soda first order. Means inversion of cane sugar means converting the sugar into the uh, glucose and sucrose. That process also follows a soda first order. So I will send you the notes for this one as I sent in the previous videos. So based on that you can write it. Okay. So coming to the next one, here is a definition or the small concept. For your examination part, it is not important. Uh, it is not coming in theoretical part. I mean to say in your exam or in coming the theory, we are not discussing. It is not having any application. But it will help you in the competitive exams. If you go for the CAT or near uh, JWD. Uh, applied questions or in problems, you may get this definition. Based on this definition, the problem will be given. Therefore, it is important for your competitive purpose, not for theoretical purpose. Means for your annual exam, it is not important. So, anyhow, what is temperature coefficient? It will be the meaning of temperature coefficient is nothing but it is the ratio of it is the ratio of specific rate constant. Here, k is nothing but it is the k is nothing but rate constant. We are calling that a specific rate constant, or you can call that as simply uh, rate constant. Temperature coefficient is nothing but it is defined as the ratio of rate constant. The ratio of rate constant differing by the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius. It means take this up. The reaction, the same reaction, sometimes it is, it is considered as the rate constant for 30 degrees Celsius. The rate constant for 30 degrees Celsius. Another reaction, the same reaction taken by differing the temperature at 40 degrees Celsius. Rate constant is variable. So what we are saying in this expression is rate constant, rate constant is depends on the temperature. So as the temperature varies, the rate constants also varies. They are interrelated to each other. So it means that temperature coefficient is nothing but its ratio of these two are the ratio which is containing the rate constant differing by the temperature of 10 degree. Means some of the rate constant for any temperature, you can take just 10 degree, 10 degree Celsius, the rate constant is this much. The same reaction again when the temperature is greater than 10, the previous one. If it is 10 degree, 10 plus 10, 20 degree Celsius. If it is 25, at 25 degree, the rate constant is this much. And increasing that by 10 degree means 25 plus 10, 35 degree. At 35 degree, what will be the rate constant? The ratio of these two is called as temperature coefficient. Temperature coefficient is the ratio of specific rate constant differing by the temperature 10 degree. We are having the reference of 10 degree. The upper one is having the 10 degree greater than the lower one. That ratio is called as temperature coefficient. I will be taking this one. So coming to the next one. Here, the important theory 
in this chemical kinetic is this one also it will be asked about three marks and in the previous question paper it is asked to okay. here explain the arrhenius theory of activated complex explain the arrhenius theory of activated complex or discuss the arrhenius theory so here arrhenius is the name of the scientist he is going to explain that to form the reaction to continue the reaction we need the reactant to be active and to form that reactant as an activated complex what is that activated so activated is nothing but when the reactions are continuing means reactant to the product the reactant do not react with each other concentrate here the reactant do not react with each other unless they become unstable are you getting this point if they are stable means they will not react with each other they have to be a unstable when they become unstable when they are getting some energy in the ground level they are stable by receiving some energy they are going to be unstable means they are going to be active when they becomes active at that time to being active molecule they will combine each other to form a product so this theory is going to explain the same thing here so here the reactants to make it as a active molecule active compound or active complex we need to supply some amount of the energy what is that energy is called how much minimum amount of energy is required to make that reactant to act, react each other means to form that as active molecule this way this theory is going to explain about the formation of reactant into the product by making the reactant as active molecule that's why the theory explains the activated complex so let's begin arrhenius theory of activated complex look here for example generally hydrogen when it reacts with the iodine is going to give hydrogen iodide hydrogen iodide it is a ion so by making this balancing two hydrogen and two iodines in the right hand left hand right side so this is general expression looking at the mechanisms it is not a mechanism it is a theory of arrhenius how means generally instead of writing this h by side by side i am writing here below just uh, to make you clear no doubt no, in the notes also you can write the same thing h2 and this one is i2 when hydrogen combines with the iodine it's going to form the hydrogen iodide look here so initially this hydrogen and iodines are not directly form the hydrogen iodide so they are going to form the activated complex how means initially they will take a temporary bonds temporary bonds how means h and h and this is i and another one is i h2 plus i2 they will react with each other they will react with each other at that time this bond will mix so this bond is mix can you see here so here dash 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 line indicates that the bond is not perfect it's weak it's loosely bonded it means the dash dash this bond straight line of bonds are not there it means that the bond is weaker means it's not strong it's a weaker at any time it may have the breakage that is the meaning of this dash bond and same thing it means this hydrogen bond is weaker why because the hydrogen is making a temporary bond with the iodine here also this hydrogen is making the temporary bond with the iodine so this is called as intermediate intermediate i hope you remember this kind of the reaction in haloalkenes and halorenes so that the hydrogen bond that is intermediate sn1 or sn2 reaction you are having this intermediate and look here in sn2 you are having single step reactions same thing here hydrogen and iodine what we are going to get here hydrogen iodide we need so it means this hi is going to form a new bond and there is a cleavage of hydrogen h2 and i2 under the cleavage this bond will cleave and hi and h is going to form so next step is h i plus h i is going to form therefore we are calling it as two h is formed so it means what here Here, hydrogen and iodine are not directly forming the hydrogen iodide, and in the intermediate form, they are taking the bond presence of everyone. Means hydrogen to iodide, hydrogen to hydrogen. These are having the weaker bond. If they undergo the forward reaction, it means hydrogen iodide will take up bond by breakage of H H and I I. 
if it is taking a reverse reaction, HI bond will cleave and hydrogen bond will forms. Are you getting this point? So it means that what is this RNA is going to explain regarding this one? To react the hydrogen and iodine, the hydrogen and iodine are going to be react with each other. So when they are getting the minimum amount of energy. So what is that minimum amount of energy? So minimum amount of energy is called as before we move to the that that it's measure. You just uh, you will have a look of that important diagram. So this is also important. Next one is theory. Based on that we will understand the Arrhenius theory better. So look here the Arrhenius theory of activated uh, activated complex can be understood by this graph easily. So my intention to explain the theory on the basis of some diagram or some uh, concept keeping in mind it will be easy to understand the theory if it is theoretically point only by the sentence it is not possible therefore I am giving you the notes but try to understand explain this concept based on this theory so it will be easy one and you can understand remember it up to the end of your exams so look here this is the graph and uh, X axis shows the formation of reaction or reaction carry and Y axis it is potential energy. In this potential energy, I have drawn some ground rules. So look here, here it is representing the energy, this potential energy of the reactant. Uh, the reaction whichever we are taking in the previous, the reactants are hydrogen H2 plus iodine. When hydrogen and iodine are combined each other, they are never reacts with each other unless and until they occupy some amount of the energy. Why? Because they have to get the more energy so that in that energy only they will unstable. You are not supposed to use the word unstable. Why I am saying to understand you? That's all. Here, the energy, initially they are not having energy. So when we get minimum energy to make them activated, when they are active, then only they will react with each other. Therefore, to make this reactant as active or activated complex or active molecule, the amount of energy is required. How much of energy is required? Hydrogen and iodines are going to combine with each other when they reach this point. This point, this is called as activated complex. This itself is called as activated molecule or active energy. We can call this as active energy. Commonly we call the amount of energy required to reach from ground to the activated complex means amount of energy required to make the reactant as activated energy or activated compounds the amount of energy required is called as activation energy or activated energy the active energy is represented as Ea Ea is nothing but activated energy or active energy here what is that active energy the amount of energy required to make the Reactant as active molecule to make the reactant as active molecule. The energy is called as active energy. So here, why we need that active energy? Why not less than that active energy? No, it's not possible. If you are supplying that active active energy to make that active molecules, then only this hydrogen iodides reacts with each other to form the hydrogen iodide. To form the hydrogen iodide. So what is that the energy? Activation energy, how much it required below some of the energy, it not forms the activation energy. What is that energy? That energy is nothing but threshold energy. Threshold energy. Don't get confused. Threshold energy is nothing but the minimum amount of energy required to make the uh, molecule as active molecules. To make the molecule as active molecules, to make the molecules as active, the minimum at least need energy. That the energy is called as threshold energy. Threshold energy is the minimum energy to make the reactant as active reactant. So here, after getting the much of energy, the reactants are called the active molecules or active complex. That energy is called as activation energy. That energy is called as activation energy. For your kind information, threshold energy threshold is nothing but what do you know the word threshold i hope most of english medium students can tell them this threshold threshold is nothing but the, in kannada we are calling that as postilu ega mani entrance ig bakshna patsali olagade irutte nodre door kelagade now that ivartevi madhuvi aakshana ellaru 
ಅಕ್ಕಿ ಕಾಳು ಒದ್ದು ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ to make them as activated that the energy is called as threshold energy after getting this energy after processing this threshold energy the molecules are going to become the activated complex or activated molecules by receiving energy that energy is called as activation energy just to concentrate here in the potential in the energy the reactants are having some hope the potential energy is here in this can you see here by extending this one compared to the reactant the product is having still more lesser amount of energy can you see the difference product is having the lesser energy than that of reactant see here why because here the reactant having some energy some energy the reactant are going to form the activated reactant by receiving more energy so when they are going to form the product at that time the product should be lesser than the reactant energy the potential energy of the product should be lesser than the reactant why because they should not form a reverse reaction so if the reactant and product are having same energy then they, the reaction may undergo the reversible so it means reactant to the product may form and again for product to the reactant there is a chance to form so it means if we need a forward reaction the compared to the reactant product should have the lesser energy the compound is having very much lesser energy the compound is more stable so it means that compared to reactant product should have the lesser potential energy to make it as a reaction forward reaction you should know this meaning okay so this is the important to arrange a steady stepping up to form the active type complex we need to supply the Uh, minimum energy that is called as threshold energy after getting that one the molecules are going to form the active molecules that active molecules are having that sufficient energy that energy is called as activation energy are you getting this one so this is the arrangement theory of activated complex